Tell me where this picture's from. Yeah, the guy's got his vest on, pretty obvious there. But yeah, there's your Boston bombing, right? Several things happened there. Okay, Aurora, Colorado shooting. The fire department was just completely overwhelmed. They got called for um, an injury, and then it was like, oh, someone's been shot. And then come to find out, 58 or 70 injured total, 58 from gunshots. Las Vegas shooting, everyone's at a concert. Nashville Waffle House, not as many here, but still something closer to home. And then just last year, the Fort Worth car accident. This isn't even a terrorist shooter. Somebody wasn't meaning harm there, but um, just a pile up. And now you have a mass casualty incident. If this happened in a more, this was a mass casualty for them. If it happened in a more rural county, how much more of a mass casualty would that be trying to get resources out there to treat everybody? So what's to say you're not in one of those cars, your family's in one of those cars, you're driving by and you see people in those cars. Um, so again, just the importance of having some medical equipment with you. Um, as far as emergencies are concerned, medical emergencies are some of the most common. So um, that is one reason that you need to have um, some equipment with you to be able to do something. And if you at least have a really good understanding and you have very minimal equipment, you can still make that equipment go a long ways and you can improvise some ways as long as you have some basic understanding of it. What I'm trying to do with this class is, I've had a bunch of people ask for TCCC classes. TCCC is a very military class, like everything about it. When you get the evac care, you're doing nine lines evac. That's calling in a helicopter. Are you calling a CASIVAC or MEDIVAC? How are you ha packaging this patient in a Stokes basket for extract? Like, we're not gonna be doing that on the civilian side. So there's a lot of stuff in that class that you go over that's not relevant. So they dumb that down to a TECC, I shouldn't say dumbed it down. They changed the tactics to a TECC, meant for first responders, cops, uh, firefighters, ambulance crews. So that's a great class. But again, like a lot of that is IO administration, ketamine um, for pain management, all this kind of stuff. So still not really applicable to civilians. What you're getting today is the active shooter for the prepared civilian. So if you have feedback on this class, let me know because I've basically taken TCC, TCCC, put it together into today's class. Now, granted, I'm teaching these to civilians, so this is more of a, for your information only, I can't certify you to do these things, but um, that's, a lot of people are wanting that kind of training, so they're going to TCC classes, and still they're getting a bunch of stuff that's not relevant to them, so. That's kind of the way that we're headed with this class. Um, so, I'm trying to make this as interactive as possible, so this first 30 minutes is going to be the only time you're up front here. Other than at the end, we'll do like some evaluations and stuff at the end. Other than that, we've got different stations moving around. We're going to be moving around and doing stuff interactively as we're learning. When I'm talking about carrying medical equipment with you at all times, this is one of the reasons why that's important. There's, you know, you can carry medical equipment even in places that don't allow guns. Maybe you shouldn't be going to the places that don't allow guns, but that's, that's for a different conversation. But the, uh, the medical equipment, you can take that on the airplane. You can take trauma shears on an airplane. I've done that multiple times. They will want to look through your bag and find them. So have them toward the front of your bag, have the trauma shears exposed. So when it goes through, you can be like, yeah, I've got trauma shears in that bag. Like, oh, okay, under three inches, you're good. And they put it back in, send you on your way, no big deal. But you can have a full IFAC on an airplane, carry it with you anywhere you go. So um, there's nowhere that I know of that won't let trauma shears and some of that stuff. Decompression needles, I fly with those um, so they don't have any issues with that. So um, we'll go into this a little bit more in a little while, but if you have an IFAC, we can pull all your stuff out. We can replace it with all the IFACs um, material back there. Um, and so we'll pack it with training supplies. We'll use that today and then you can pack it back at the end. An IFAC is an individual first aid kit. So it is a Typically, when we're saying IFAC in the military and tactical setting, an IFAC is your medical supplies. You put it on you, if something happens to you, you can either work out of it or someone else can come use it to treat you. Um, typically, you're not using it for other people. So that's one reason there's a lot of confusion right now in like civilian carrying medical supplies. They're like, oh, I have an IFAC. Well, technically an IFAC is for you. It's your individual first aid kit but what most people carry is a medical kit. So the medical kit would be used for other people. It's really terminology. If you're working in a team and you have six people on a team, everyone has their own IFAC, and then you have a medic in the group that has a backpack with a bunch of supplies, you're treating casualties out of your backpack, and that's extra, extra supplies. But if something happens to Sam, and I go over to help him, 
and I've, you know, we're taking fire or something, and I go over to help Sam, well, I know Sam's got medical equipment on him. I don't have to find the medic or find the extra bag. I know he's got stuff on him, so I'll go use his, his stuff on him and patch him up. So when we're saying IFAC, that's really what we're talking about, is that one that that person is carrying for them. Today, we're going back and forth between an IFAC and a um, medical kit. So if you're treating somebody and they have an IFAC on them, use theirs on them. If uh, That way, if you get injured, you've got your stuff on you. Um, but we're going to rotate back and forth because this is a civilian class. We're going to be in active shooter situation. That's all you have, and you're going to be treating people with what you have. So, um, but yes, I'm using that term kind of loosely today, but the IFAC would be the medical kit that you have with you. So, so first, let's talk about, um, we already talked about T, TCCC and TECC. Um, so the, the committee of TCCC, Tactical Combat Casualty Care, is a group of uh, medics, physicians, um, people from the military and civilian side, they're all looking at data primarily from military and they're trying to figure out for the military application, what are we going to do to treat casualties that have been wounded? So one, um, one thing that they've come up with is the um, TCCC guidelines and then the MARCH algorithm, which you may have heard, but that's basically an assessment protocol for how we're going to treat people. So when they come out with this data, remember this is specifically meant for the battlefield. Now, when you're talking about putting a tourniquet on someone in the battlefield, they have more experience putting tourniquets on than anybody else. So we probably want to listen to what they're saying as far as tourniquet application, compression rates, what equipment to use, that kind of thing. But just know some of the tactics that are in there may not be relevant because we may not be in the same hostile situations overseas, wherever, um, having to call in helicopters. Like if someone got injured today right here, we're not calling in a whole fleet of helicopters and security and everything else. Like, so that's going to look differently. So just keep that in mind that some of these tactics you're going to see don't really apply to first responders, and even some of the ones for first responders don't apply to civilians. Um, but a lot of the basic medical is the same thing. So that's what we're trying to do today is we're trying to weed through some of this, pull out what's relevant to us, and apply that. Um, there's three main parts to this class. The first is what they call care under fire in TCCC. And then once you come to the civilian side, it's called direct threat care. That is when there's still a direct threat, whether that is a active shooter, whether that is a bomb that you th think is a bomb that has not gone off yet, whether that is a uh, car wreck that's about to fall off an embankment. It's kind of the critical incident where there's still a threat and we have to do something quick, okay? So that is our direct threat or care under fire. For today, since it's mostly active shooter stuff, we can call it care under fire. That's when that active shooter is still there. You don't know where he is or you do know where he is and he's sending shots down range and Sam just got shot and he's six feet from me. What am I gonna do while there's still an active scene going on to help him out? Second phase is gonna be indirect threat care. So the threat may be uh, neutralized. Maybe we don't know where the threat is. He's not shooting, he's not in here, but I'm not sure where he is um, or He's still out there and we've moved the casualty to cover now. We have some time to work on them. Um, we're distanced, we're a little bit safer, bullets are not flying, um, and now we're gonna continue to treat that casualty. So this is indirect threat care or tactical field care. So the military calls it tactical field care. So they're doing this care still out in the field, but they're not as concerned right now about uh, active threat. In that, that's when we do our MARCH algorithm. M-A-R-C-H, massive hemorrhage, airway, respirations or uh, respiratory. Um, circulation, and then we'll talk about hypothermia and head injury at the end, and we're going to do some of that outside. The last phase is our evac care, which for us as civilians, or even really first responders as on the fire side, is we're going to treat that patient, and then our evac care is really the ambulance. So we're going to be passing a report off to the ambulance, giving them information of what happened to this patient, and getting them out of there and transferred to another crew. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, and those are the three categories. So remember those three categories, they'll come up later and we'll work through them as we go throughout the day. Um, and then we'll work through that March algorithm, which mainly falls in that middle category. You'll do some of that stuff in the evac care, um, but really that's more what we're doing, where we're stopping today is transferring that off to the ambulance and then they're gonna get further care. Make sense? Questions on that? So what are our three phases? What's the first one? Under fire, care. care under fire or direct threat care. What's our second one? Tactical field care or indirect threat care. 
right? So direct threat, indirect threat. So direct threat's active shooter, indirect threat is shooter's been neutralized, but we still don't have an ambulance there or whatever. And then what's our last one? Evac, evac, evacuation, yep, evac care. Cool. Um, and what do our five things in March stand for? A, R, C, H, head injury or hypothermia. Yep, awesome. So um, next up, let's head to these chairs in the back. We're gonna talk tourniquets for a little bit and then we're gonna do a little bit of a scenario.